Take a look at the New York Post cover story saying Hunter Biden admits the infamous laptop, it's his. Hunter's attorneys who are asking uh, for a criminal probe firing back today saying that the letters that they sent do not confirm that the laptop is actually Hunter's. Huh. Here now to break all of this nonsense down, and I mean nonsense from Hunter Biden's team, is New York Post columnist Miranda Devine, also a Fox News contributor. Miranda, with Hunter's attorneys essentially trying to in part weaponize his daddy's Justice Department against people who have spread and printed this information from what is very obviously his laptop. My question, why now? Why would he sick his lawyers on people who are spreading what is the truth now? Well, I think there's two reasons. One is that uh, I think they're trying to divert attention from um, a really hot spot that's happening where the um, classified documents scandal that's swirling around the president is now touching on the Delaware investigation by the US attorney there into Hunter Biden and his business dealings. Um, so I, I think that that's something that Joe Biden has tried to avoid for a long time. And so, in a way, this could be a diversion. And I think successfully, James Comer and his team have managed to take the focus off Hunter Biden and put it where it belongs, on Joe Biden. Because really, uh, this scandal is not so much about Hunter or even his uncle Jim Biden. It is about the President of the United States and whether or not he's been compromised by the millions of dollars that flowed through to his family from China and Russia and Ukraine, America's adversaries, uh, using his name. These were basically bribes uh, to try and extract some sort of favour from the then vice president. Um, so that's the story. That's what's important. And Hunter Biden and his lawyers and the media figures who support him and the Bidens are doing their absolute best to point the finger at us, people who, who are talking about this grave national security risk, and say, oh, you're just being mean to a poor former drug addict and Hunter Biden is not a citizen. You just read the Washington Post or the New York Times comments whenever they run a story about Hunter Biden. That's the narrative. That has been sown by these dark money Democrat groups, very well funded, that are now going into offense to try and uh, protect the Biden family ahead of these Republican hearings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Miranda, I, f I find it fascinating. Here you have a trove of information that you laid out in the laptop from Hellbook where the FBI should be investigating uh, Hunter Biden. But again, if, if they can actually pivot and say, you know what, Hunter Biden's not guilty. The real criminals are the Miranda Devines, the uh, the, the laptop repairmen, the, the Rudy Giuliani's of the world. And if law enforcement listens to that and, 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 and Hunter's not prosecuted and Joe's not prosecuted, but those who brought this information to the American people are, I think that's the last straw of trust that people have in the justice system. Well, absolutely. I mean, you note that uh, Hunter's lawyers wrote to the Attorney General of Delaware and, uh, you know, various... Of, of Joe Biden's allies and um, cronies uh, to try and, and get these, uh, get some sort of relief. Um, I think really the, the letters that he's sending out at the moment are kind of performative. They're about trying to get his false narrative out into the public sphere, but unfortunately it backfired really badly on them yesterday because um, that first letter just said that Hunter Biden had admitted that the laptop was his. And then 24 hours later, we get another sort of clarification from his lawyer saying, oh, no, that's not what they meant at all. You know, this is, uh, you know, we're not saying that it was his laptop. Well, then why are you trying to get people prosecuted for uh, disseminating the contents of your laptop? If it's not your laptop, why do you care? Why is it an invasion of your privacy? Is as his lawyers allege. Miranda, speaking of performative, here's something that President Biden said to Peter Ducey, a flashback, if you will. Listen to this. Yeah. I still think that the stories 
from the fall about your son Hunter. We're rushing this information and it's scary as came like you said. Yes, yes, yes. God love you, man. You, you're a one horse pony. There's nothing to any of that. Nothing to any of that. It's all a smear. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. It's just astonishing uh, to go back and look at that. But to uh, raise one question, yeah. with these letters going out from Hunter Biden's attorneys, particularly one sent to the Justice Department, it could backfire in the way that now that his lawyers are trying to put the hammer down and weaponize Joe Biden's own Justice Department, now do we get a special counsel investigating Hunter Biden? Well, look, there's a special counsel investigating Joe Biden's classified documents. Right. Uh, if there is an overlap, as we suspect, between those classified documents and material um, on the laptop, um, then, then that's a problem. Then I think that those two um, inquiries will merge. Mm -hmm. And you heard there Joe Biden telling a lie. He knew perfectly well that that was his son's laptop. Uh, when he was in the debate against President Trump in 2020 and he said it was a Russian plant. He knew it wasn't. And he knew that those 51 intelligence officials had lied when they had written in that letter that the laptop, basically they said was Russian disinformation, but they used a different form of words. They said had all the earmarks of a Russian information operation. Uh, it was certainly read that way as if it was Russian disinformation, and that was what they intended. And it was intended to get Joe Biden off the hook because he was going to have to go and give that debate two days later. And you saw how smoothly he lied, and it did get him off the hook. But Miranda, I look at this too and go, we talk about Joe Biden being compromised. And if they admit the laptop is real, then that means the big guy is real, and the 10% of the profits from Joe Biden being in the Oval Office as vice president that was made by Hunter went to the big guy. He's guilty of sin. He's compromised. And to Dagan's point, there should be a special counsel. There should be an investigation to a president who violated the law um, and is now sitting in the, in the Oval Office. Yeah, it's very difficult, though, because you have um, a very um, duplicitous uh, person who's in the Oval Office. Uh, he is Merrick Garland's boss. Um, it's, a, it's a very difficult situation that Merrick Garland has found himself in and I think appointing that special counsel uh, to look at the classified documents was a shock to the White House. They had hoped to keep that story under wraps. Um, and I think that it is going to bleed into the Hunter Biden scandal and that's why the White House is panicking and that's why, as you just uh, said, Dagan, I think Ron Klain uh, deliberately bringing up uh, Joe Biden's sort of qualities of fatherhood at this particular time was um, was very important. Uh, obviously, they want to create an image that Joe Biden is guilty of nothing except being a loving father to his only son. Um, that's not the case. Uh, whether or not he is a loving father is is one matter, but what's really important to the American people and why it's worthy of Congress investigating is whether or not, for instance, Joe Biden going soft on China with his policies, as he most definitely has, uh, particularly unwinding the China initiative, um, whether that has something to do with the millions of dollars that his family took from China. Those are really important questions. We have two more years of Joe Biden, probably as president. Uh, we need to know if he's been compromised. And I think uh, just ignore the smokescreen, ignore the emotional claptrap that's going to be coming out of the Hunter Biden camp. It's all about creating a narrative, eliciting sympathy, which of course has been Joe Biden's chief campaign uh, tool since the very beginning of his days in Delaware. He's had grief in his life and tragedy, and therefore the American people very open-hearted people have always given him the benefit of the doubt. But I think he's now in such a powerful position. I don't think he can use that empathy card anymore. 
Marina Devine, you are, uh, you've been, you've, history has been very good to you and, uh, and um, the Post uh, it's, with these stories. But Miranda, you said, I, I just want to say, add one thing, if I might. It's the juxtaposition. I keep hearing this isn't rel relevant to Americans. It is relevant because it's the juxtaposition of an American who gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning and works seven days a week. Uh, until the sun sets and toils to put food on the table for a family and separately a family that abuses the system and risk national security to enrich themselves and endangers the United yeah. States at the same time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've nailed it there, Dagan. It's a really important matter. And uh, what we're going to see uh, as things get more rugged is more and more of this fake narrative, this emotional, good father, honest Joe story. I think that mythology has well and truly collapsed, but there's still elements of the media that are keeping it up. Thank you, Miranda. Miranda Devine. Thanks. Sorry. Thanks, Dagan. Thanks, Sean.